Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I've just finished building this guy. It's my new video editing slash gaming setup, and quite honestly, it's completely over the top. Now before I show you what this thing can do, let me run you through the specs, and as we go, see if you can get like a rough idea of the price in your mind, and top it up as we go through, and then see if you're anywhere close by the end. It's, um, it's not cheap. At its core, we have an AMD Threadripper 3970X. That's a 32-core, 64-thread chip, and except for their even more ridiculous 64-core Threadripper, this is one of the most powerful prosumer chips you can buy. I mean, this is meant for 8K video editing, proper high-end film production, or serious 3D rendering and CAD design. For pure multi-threaded performance, the 3970X here is almost unbeatable. So basically, this whole build came about because AMD got in touch and asked if I wanted to test out one of their 3970X chips. And of course, I'm not going to say no to that. So I thought then, well, let's do a whole build around it. But then that's where things started to spiral because then, of course, you're going to need a TRX4 motherboard to go with it. And if you've seen the prices of those things, ugh, it all adds up pretty quick. But by this point, I just wanted to go full steam ahead. So I've gone with the ASUS ROG Strix TRX40E gaming board. As I say, all Threadripper boards are pretty expensive, and while Asus's Zenith 2 is the top of the line, that costs over £700 by itself. Whereas this will set you back a little under £500, which still has everything I need, with 8 memory slots for up to 256GB of RAM, room for 3 M2 SSDs, which do support PCIe 4, and nice extras like Wi-Fi 6, this OLED display, and Asus's fancy AuraSync lighting. Now speaking of PCIe 4, and I've got two M2 drives with me here from Sabrent. A primary 2TB PCIe 4 drive, and then a secondary 8TB PCIe 3. So 10TB in total. That's a lot of 4K poor <laughs> But seriously, it's going to take a while to fill that up, and they're both lightning fast drives. Just wait for the benchmarks. Now let's talk about RAM, and this is where things got kind of tricky, because Crucial very kindly sent over 32 gigs of their 3600MHz Ballistics RGB RAM. But then given how over the top the rest of the PC is, I kind of wanted 64, so I went out and bought another uh, lot of 32 gigs of the same RAM, so 64 in total. Great. But then, out of the blue, Crucial sent me another 32 gigs of RAM, but this time they're even faster, 4,000 megahertz. But now I've got a problem, admittedly a very first world problem, but do I stick with the 64 gigs of 3600 megahertz RAM, or go for the new 32 gigs of 4000 megahertz RAM. Which would you go for? Let me know in the comments below, and based on that, I will make the decision. Right now, I've got the 32 in here, but in my drawer is the 64, so what do you think? Just quickly, guys, a big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Their VPN actually saved the day when I wanted to jump into a bit of Warzone the other day, but then saw an update which was taking forever to download. But then I used Surfshark, changed my location to New York, and it made all the difference, since it was then downloading from different servers. I mean, that's just one use case. I also use it to check out US Netflix or Hulu while I'm here in the UK. And generally, it's just awesome for keeping you safe while you're browsing the web. Preventing ads, tracking, malware, and all that bad stuff. So why not give Surfshark a try? Follow the link in the description or enter the code TECHCHAP to get 85% off and three months extra completely free. As for graphics, well, if I was going to go out and buy a brand new card right now, well, to be honest, I'd actually wait until September for the next gen cards to come out. But fortunately, I have my 2080 Ti for my old PC, and then powering everything, I bought the HX1000 from Corsair. I've measured this PC draw about 700 watts at its peak, so I've still got some headroom. Now the truth is, I've actually had most of these components just laying about for the last few weeks because I've been holding out uh, for a new Cooler Master case and also a new Cooler Master cooler. Cooler Master cooler. Because most coolers, particularly AIOs, uh, don't actually fit the bigger TR4 socket of the Threadripper chip. So then you have to use the adapter that comes with it and it's just not ideal. Obviously this is a pretty hot and power hungry uh, chip so you kind of want the best cooling possible. So I got in touch with Cooler Master and they very kindly sent over the ML360 AIO cooler which is designed for Threadripper and covers the whole thing. No adapters needed. And so with the three 120mm fans, the chip stays nice and cool. And finally, the case, which actually is the most affordable part of this whole build. Now, I was seriously considering the Lian Li O11D, which looks fantastic and a lot of people highly recommend, but it's just a bit too big. And while I'm water cooling the Threadripper, I wanted good airflow as well, especially with the TI. So I went with Cooler Master's brand new TD500 case. It's pretty compact, the top and front are mesh as well for better airflow, and it costs under £100. 
The only downside for me is the lack of a USB-C port on the front, and it doesn't look quite as slick as something like the Lian Li, but it was easy to build with and I do recommend it. All right, so that's the setup, but any guesses on price? I mean, considering the Threadripper, the 2080 Ti, the uh, 4000 megahertz RAM, the 10 terabytes of storage, I'm almost afraid to say, but I priced it up and we're looking at about 5,000 pounds or close to $6,000 for this guy, which is just, insane and to be honest pretty overkill for what i use but it's still pretty awesome nonetheless oh and finally i've paired it with this lg ultra wide it's the 38 wk 95c i've actually had this for a couple of years now and i love the size and the color accuracy for editing but it is only 75 hertz and there's no free sync or g-sync however i do have a brand new 38 wn 95c which i saw at ces this year with 144 hertz g-sync thunderbolt 3 brighter hdr Basically what's gonna be my perfect monitor and it should be coming pretty soon so I'll do a video with that when I get it. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the build and as you might expect, it's quite quick as well. And kicking off with Cinebench, just look at how fast it renders. I've never seen a score this high in person, 17,131. In Geekbench 5, I mean just look at that multi-core performance, 22,031. And it's no slouch in the graphics department either, with a CUDA score of nearly 160,000 and 127,000 with OpenCL. And then in 3D Mark, we're looking at an overall score of almost 9,000. Pretty impressive stuff. But now let's test the Sabrent Rocket. This is the PCI4 SSD, and we're looking at 5,000 megabytes per second read and 4,200 write. Then compared to my 8 terabyte PCI 3 Sabrent drive, which still delivers around 3,500 read and 3,000 write, it's actually not far behind. So benchmarks are all well and good, but what about actual real world performance? Well, for me, I spend about half my life, it seems, in Premiere Pro. And coming from the Intel i7-8700K in my previous build, everything feels faster from scrubbing around the timeline, warp stabilizing and adding effects. Of course, the real test will be when I can edit some properly high quality 8K video on this guy. Uh, although right now my GH5 I'm using is limited to 4K. Uh, if Red, you know, if you're watching and you want to shoot me an email and send over a high quality 8K camera, then that'd be pretty cool. I'd give it a go. <laughs> but interestingly, when it comes to export times, the Threadripper hasn't made a huge difference. And the reason for that is following Adobe's recent update that puts a lot more of the load onto the GPU, particularly with Nvidia cards, but AMD GPUs as well. So you can see in the task manager with the video encoder and the CUDA cores of the graphics card really doing the heavy lifting here. Either way, a pretty complex 10 minute 4K video with max depth and max render quality checked takes just four minutes and two seconds to export. Now you may be thinking, who really cares about shaving off a few minutes from your export time? I mean, just go make a cup of coffee or work on your thumbnail or something, and that is true. But really, it's all about multitasking. I can export a video, edit in Lightroom or Photoshop, have a bunch of Chrome tabs open, and there's performance to spare. I can even jump into a bit of Warzone while I'm exporting. So what about gaming? Well, I usually try to get a few games of Warzone in most days, and while of course Threadripper isn't primarily aimed at gamers, the 4.3 GHz boost clock speed is still pretty decent. And more and more games are being developed with higher core and thread counts in mind. So in Call of Duty, with ultra settings at Quad HD+, I'm averaging 130 FPS. They're underneath, they're underneath, wow. you gotta do this, don't do oh. 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 <laughs> in Rainbow Six Siege, same settings, and we're looking at a whopping 295 FPS average. For games at least, I definitely need that monitor upgrade. Even maxing out settings, I'm still not anywhere near taking full advantage of all that performance. Oh, and just for fun, I've been keen to get into Command & Conquer Remastered, which actually looks pretty great, and we're getting over 650 FPS. Just in case you were thinking, how well is CNC going to play with a 2080 Ti and a 32 core Threadripper? Now you know. I know you need more deep background, but we're up against it. It really has been a lot of fun building this PC and I'm just in awe of the performance. I guess though that the 2080 Ti is probably the oldest component of the whole thing. So I can't wait to see what AMD and Nvidia are gonna show off September, October time with their next gen graphics cards. Don't buy a graphics card right now if you can help it because there's something a lot better coming around the corner. Thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more from me, but I have put links to everything I've used in the description below if you want to check it out or maybe even build one for yourself uh, if you've got very, very deep pockets. And I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat. Oh, and don't forget to give Surfshark VPN a try. There's a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not completely satisfied, but I genuinely use it all the time. And it's so easy with their Chrome extension, the desktop program, or with the app on your phone. 
So check out the link below and use the code TECHCHAT for 85% off and three months extra free.